This is Network Marketing Pro. My name is Eric Worre, and today I'm here with my friend, Armand Pajol. How are you, Eric? How are you? Phenomenal. Thank, thank you for coming to town. <laughs> super, super. Thank you for the invitation. I really do appreciate it. You drove over from uh, Los Angeles? Definitely. Oh, yeah, very nice. Anything for you guys. Very nice. I got an opportunity to meet this guy this last year. We've, we've known of each other for some time, but finally got a chance to hang out a little bit, hear a little bit of his story, see what he's doing. And um, so we just decided, hey, we should, we should have an interview. Also, at Network Marketing Pro, we know we're far behind the curve when it comes to serving our Latin, Latin community Definitely. Um, you know, throughout North America, Central America, South America, uh, we, we're, we're not doing as good of a job as we need to do. And, and uh, our, we have a big commitment to improve that over the course of this next year. Uh, and I think you can help us. Phenomenal. I would love to help to, to really do that. To do that. Why don't you talk, as, as we start, why don't you talk to people about, uh, you know, where did you grow up? What's your story? Where did you come from? Well, basically, you know, I grew up... Uh, with a single mom, right? And with the dads on the weekend, you know, type of deal, you know? And one of the things that happened, especially with, uh, with my life, is that I ended up going to his hot truck, lunch truck, or road coach, whatever you guys like to call it, and work with him. And I used to love that to do, you know, just to- Where was this? It was in Los Angeles. Okay. So he was one of these original guys that was out there, you know, cooking food for these companies out there. And we used to love to go out there with him and just spend some time. And I was to the point that I was even charging people and, you know, I was giving them the right change and everything. There was no computers back then, so everything was calculated in your brain, right? And I really loved the sense of business from that point. And it, like, uh, I, I know a lot of people love baseball, a lot of people love football, and a lot of people love, you know, all these sports out there. This is my sport, you mm. know, and when business, and I figured that business was my sport, I just stuck to that really hard. Now, did, were, were, did you think that way through school also? When, when did you start doing this, to get this business mindset? How old well, were you? Well, look, during, during school, I, obviously I was living with my mom. She was not uh, very, she didn't have that much money. I mean, we were going through homes. Sometimes we lost a home. Sometimes we were kicked out of an apartment. Hard, or hard, hard, hard Very hard woman, time. Sure. Definitely, definitely. And to help her, sometimes we, I used to go out there and try to find something to do. One of the things that I did was, I was that guy at the high school with, the, you know, instead of a backpack full of, uh, uh, you know, books, it was full of candy. And I was like hawking candy everywhere else, you know, and I was selling it. I was like, I think I was making more money than the drug dealers, right? <laughs> but, you know, so I started making a lot of money. People used to know me as, you know, the guy who just always made some money here and here and there and, you know, had the car. And, and you know, I started really growing in that, in, that, in that area. So, you know, when network marketing came to me, basically it was one of these situations was funny because somebody invited my mom to a home party. Mm -hmm. And when I showed up to this home party and I looked at all her friends buying this stuff, I was like, you know what, I need that stuff to sell it to them without knowing what network marketing was really. So what I did was this, um, you know, I was looking for this company, I looked for the company, and then until I found this company, I figured out what the company was and, and basically got in, but you know, with, you know, you know and I, and I want to retract a little bit, you know when people invite you to a company and they say you got to recruit you? To me, that was absurd at that time. I was mm -hmm. like, you know, what, what, recruit? You know, what do you mean, sponsor me? What? So to me, I was trying to find the wholesaler. Mm -hmm. And I was looking for that wholesaler. Until I found somebody who actually explained it to me. I got in and... So you're trying to get to the source. Exactly. You didn't want to have a middleman. No, man. no, I didn't want that middleman, right? So I got this product and, I, and I, I started selling it. But I basically did this. I never knew network marketing. I never did network marketing. As a matter of fact, this company was a step to learn mm. what network marketing was for me because what I did was I took this product and I hired, hired, now I didn't recruit no one. I hired a lot of kids from my school with the school jerseys and the and the uh, uh, you know and the jackets and everything. And we went door to door, mm. and it, basically everybody thought it, we were selling chocolate or something for the school. But uh, this product, we were just hawking it down every door, every door. Everybody was buying something. So I kind of got to the top of the ranks there in sales, not in the, in the network marketing sense, but mm. in the sales wise. And people were trying to figure out how is he selling so much product. You know, as a matter of fact, a lot of people at my age, because I was 16, people thought that maybe it was my mom selling the product and I was, mm. they were usually was using my social or something, you know, to do the business. So when that happened and I went to this regional event where they, they, they talked about, you know, they would put me on stage and everything, it kind of had this one cold feeling where 
you know you didn't belong in that room, you know, mm. because everybody's looking at you like you're doing it wrong, but how are you being successful? You know, and I kind of got off the stage and just head right out of the room. And I mean, I just went as far as I could, you know, and, and just sat down. So you're just table. going on pure, pure passion and hustle. Definitely. That's all you I You just knew. said like, hey, this is a product. I can sell it. I'll come up with my own little plan to sell it. Yeah. Didn't even know that these people had already had a structure. Definitely. No, I was building my own business. Right. You know, definitely. So you had a bit, you, they, they were just a product supplier for you. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Right. Definitely. And in, in, so you're getting recognized for stuff you didn't even understand what you're getting recognized well, for. Well, I didn't even know why I was there, you mm -hmm. know, and to to get the reception. Was your mom involved? No, not at all. Oh, okay. Not at all. But uh, every time, you know, when I got onto the stage, right, and they were doing the recognition, and, and I'm looking, I'm telling them my story, why I'm, how I did this. One of the things that I noticed is that I got this cold feeling from the room. They were like, they were like, oh, you're going door to door? Ooh. No, it was like, uh, uh, like, like deers and hair lights, man. People were looking at me and I says like, oh my God, this is not, this is not for me. So I was very upset at myself being on stage and that to the point that, and I was very like angry or didn't feel welcome. Just uncomfortable. And yeah, so, so much. And I just, as soon as I finished, I just walked out and went right out of that room. And I went so far to sit down at this little coffee shop that was not even coffee, it was a coffee kiosk, right? And then, you know, I sat down at this table and one of the gentlemen that, that was one of the, the husbands of one of the wives who really was the big ranks in that company walked up to me and said, you know what, what you're doing is all correct, but what you're missing out is residual income. Mm. And you need to learn a little thing. And so he started explaining to me all this stuff and that's how network marketing started really clicking into my head and what it was. So he explained it to you, but you, you, you didn't turn it into the big money until later on in life. That we actually, it took me a couple of years right after he told me that, it just clicked. Mm. Um, you know, I kind of turned it into, I went to a great company with him uh, and because I followed him. After that, I didn't want to do nothing with that other company mm -hmm. uh, because of the way I felt. And uh, when I went with this gentleman, we went into another company that was launching and we had very good success after that, about a few years there. Unfortunately, the government, you know, deregulation happened and, and we're forced to scatter and look for something else, unfortunately, mm. at that time. But after that, we've had uh, good success. And, right. you know, I've been, I think I'm one of the lucky ones. And I'm, when I say luck, it's because I think I was put in the right place with the right people who taught me the right things. Because I see a lot of network marketing right now and a lot of people in network marketing that are just told the wrong deal, the wrong steps to take. They're, they're, they're coached wrong into building really good residual, real good income. And I was put, I was so lucky to be put into a place where people actually knew what they were doing and they were teaching me the right steps and they were moving and I was just, I was just absorbing everything. And I think that's what uh, led to my success here in network marketing. Right. Yeah. And you've had an explosion of growth recently. Definitely, definitely. Our company just hit over $100 million in sales in a year. So I think that is just phenomenal. So yeah, we're doing yeah. very well. And and um, and your growth has grown far over a million dollars a year. Definitely. And and uh, you're helping a lot of people all around the world. Yes, sir. Uh, you've expanded your business uh, into the Hispanic marketplace Dramatically, right? What percentage of your organization do you think? I think 90% of our business is in the Hispanic area. And it didn't, it wasn't calculated that way. I mean, right. I, it, was not, it was not my strategy. As a matter of fact, I started in the United States and moving really strongly. But the leadership that I brought along from, you know, that, that I brought along from other companies, they were Hispanic first of all, and, and it kind of led into that market, you mm -hmm. know, just organically. And it was pretty awesome when you walk into an area, and you know, and not only that, I fell in love with the idea because in the Hispanic market, this is what happens. In the English market, people have jobs, most of them, and you know, where you're trying to give them their part-time job. So they never have enough time to do their part-time job, which is network market. So a lot of people are not that successful at it because of that. In the Hispanic area, if you get somebody to earn just $100, that's more than most of their paychecks. And it, to make- It depends on which country, right? Definitely, it depends on what countries. And, 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 but some countries, you know, some of their paychecks are within 50 to $200, you know, a month. Yeah, yeah. You know, it all depends on where. So if you're getting them to make $100 a week, they're full time. Mm. And they're full time, I mean, they're really pushing, they're really pushing hard. So, I mean, I got all these people that are really, I mean, they're hardcore and they're MLM spirit and they're learning, they're picking up the books. I mean, they're, they're doing everything as possible to really convert to what, you know, network marketing is around the world, so. What do you think, um, what other differences are there 
between the Hispanic marketplace and, and the English marketplace? I think in the Hispanic market, a lot of people, the difference between Hispanics uh, in, in my perspective mm -hmm. is that they're all heart. I mean, they're, mm. they're in it for, you know, to, for the love. They're in it to, not only for what their wealth can change. Obviously, everybody's in for their wealth or whatever they can do. But they're in it for, to help their fellow man. They're really there to, a they lot see of somebody. They have a passion for what they're doing. And it's just phenomenal the way you see people work. In the English market, um, everybody is very, I think, I think they've, everybody's been burnt a lot in mm. the English market. A so, more cynical. So a lot of people are more, you know, they're, they're more passive. They're, they start uh, thinking a little bit more. Is this true? Can this be right? Can, can this work? Uh, you know, and they want to see it work before they jump in. And mm -hmm. it, it, it's a totally different attitude to that. Where in the Hispanic market where you, you say, look, can you sell this one item? Yes. You sold it? All right. You made this much money. Wow. I'm in. And that's right. it. And that's all people need to know. I mean, they really don't have to teach them binaries uh, or, you know, unilevels or, or matrix yeah. No, they're just like, well, how much do I make selling the stuff? And, mm -hmm. and from there, so we can teach from, them the rest. It comes from uh, product passion one. Definitely. And selling two. Definitely. You know, and I, then growing the network. Well, I have a recruiting five steps that mm -hmm. I, cho I show people how to do. And this is the way I teach people is basically, I said, number one, you need to have product with you. Number two, you need a prospect. And when I talk about prospecting, you're going to go find people to tell you no. You got to find people all around the world to, you know, it doesn't matter who you're talking to, but you got to move some product. You know, and then number three, you got to follow up with these people. After you start following up with the people, you figure out where they're at, and then you start sorting them, which is number four. What I mean by sorting is who's a customer, who's a distributor? Not everybody's going to be a distributor. And if we have that mentality where we says, look, less than 5% of the people you're going to touch are going to be distributors. And if, if, uh, if you can get into the mindset of these people, and if you can really learn how to sort these people out, you're going to be rich. It's just mm -hmm. that simple. So I tell people, look, if you start sorting, just sorting alone, if you figure out which one's a customer, keep them as a customer. Don't force them into the business. I'd rather have a happy customer buying you every month product than, than having this uh, really frustrated person because you can't make any money. And then hold the distributor that in, in, when you kind of now sort them again, because now I'm going to sort these distributors out where I'm going to sort them, you know, do they, do, do they want to make a hundred bucks a month? Or do they want to make, let's just say a hundred dollars a week or uh, $500 a week, or I want to put them in the bunch that wants to make, you know, I want to sort them in and I'm going to put them into groups of people where their income uh, um, goal is at. For instance, mm -hmm. if they want to make $500, I'll put them into that group, work with these people because they're going to work at the same speed. You want to make a million dollars? I'll put you with these people because they're, they're, they're going for it. They're working 24 seven. That's what they want to do. I don't want to feel like you're being tugged. I don't want to feel like you're being pushed. I want you to be happy. I want to be content because the more people are content in this business they're not feeling they're not feeling like it's another job guess what they stay involved and the more they stay involved the bigger you grow give me the five again uh, the five is basically product mm -hmm. you need to have product no matter what product you sell number two you got to be prospecting mm -hmm. number three you got to follow up with people number four you got to follow you got to you got to uh, just you got to sort through people and number five you got to duplicate and what I mean by duplicate out is that you got to get to the events. You got to make sure these people are showing up. They're learning everything else. They're showing. They're learning the comp plan. They're learning, um, you know, the, the system. They're learning to to make sure they get to the conventions. They get to the, you know, the anywhere where anybody's huddling at. They got to be there. And the more you people you teach to put people together, guess what? The more you fly. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, talk to me about. How many people do you have in your group now, approximately? Right now, we're over 500,000. 500,000 people yeah. on your team. Definitely. Right. Okay. So, big group. Yeah. Yeah. So, what are some of the strategies that you've used outside of the five? Okay. I know the five are, are central. Yes. What are the strategies that you've used to grow a team of that size? Well, the, it's basically finding leadership. I think, I think that's the big key of finding people who are willing to stand in front of the room, willing to really, uh, you know, control, and just showing people, showing leadership how to control larger groups, how to control groups that are, you know, 20 plus people or, you know, 100 people together, and how to put them together, how to make them work together. And once we start finding these key leaders, then from there we start finding the, the B-class leaders, the people that just want to move 10, 20 people. So uh, of that leadership group, out of, out of 500,000, how many leaders do you think you have? I think we have top the, level. the top level leadership. I think we have over 200 okay. right now. So let's say 200 people mm -hmm. can influence half a million. Definitely so. 
Okay, so you don't have to influence all half million, you just no. have to be connected with those 200. Well, they so you're gonna be sorting through all those people to see who identifies himself, who wants to step forward and be a strong leader. Definitely. Then work with those people, develop their skills, and 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 then the, then you say you start looking for the second level leader to see if you can, you so know, we who, can up who's them. in the farm team that you Definitely. can bring up. Definitely, it's almost, we kind of move it like a, a ball club. And it's kind of use that type of style. You know, we bring up the key leaders, the people the who are really- The 200, those are, those are the pros. The, one, the ones who want it. And you can see it in their eyes. You can see the saliva coming yeah. out of their mouth. You know, they, they, they're hungry for it. And what I mean by hungry for it is that they're willing to do the work mm. that needs to be done. One of the, 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 the worst concepts about network marketing is that it's no work. And it's a shame because it really destroys a lot of views of a lot of people around the world because a lot of people get told, you don't need to recruit anybody, or you don't need to sell, and that's another one, or you don't need to do this or do that. And if we just told people right on, guess what? If you have to build, if you have to, you wanna build a million dollars a year in your group, you gotta get to work. Mm -hmm. You gotta really Work's push people. Work's not a bad people. thing. No, and you gotta it's not really. Easy. You gotta forget you gotta about sell sleeping. Some stuff. Definitely. Yeah, you gotta you gotta move as much product along as you can. And one of the key factors in network marketing that people don't understand also is that people avoid the sales part. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a major part because why are people so afraid of selling? You know, I or think Or they like, no, no, this isn't selling, it's sharing. Because everybody it's has a bad selling. concept, I think, of, of becoming a salesman. And and I tell people, look, I don't care if you're recruiting, if you're trying to sell them the big pack or the small pack in your company, you're selling it. Of course. And, and if you don't learn you're these- You're selling your kids on eating their vegetables. You're definitely. Selling, you're selling somebody to brush their teeth. I mean- Definitely, definitely. Everything's about sales. Yeah. So the more we teach people and how to really close people with these sales, the better they're gonna get. Right. And that's basically the, you know, the, the teachings that we try to teach all the distributors and the leadership every single day is that, guess what? Focus on growing your business. Because if you didn't have sales, if, if you just bought a franchise at McDonald's, for example, one of these old Subway franchises, and you'd have no people, nobody coming in, you know what? Every single distributor is coming in is considered a franchise to me. Mm -hmm. But if each franchise doesn't have a customer base coming in, guess what? They're not lasting long. Right. It's just that simple. Right. You know, it, it, you need to get out there with the sign and, and the monkey suit, trying to get people in the room. But as, mu as much as you have to do, you have to do that. How do you stay in communication with such a large group? I try to focus in the leadership only. I try to focus in, in really- So it's still back to those 200. A, definitely, I try to focus, I try to connect with everybody using Facebook, mm -hmm. one, one great example. I try to focus with everybody using a webinar and a week, uh, but yet really the strong focus is touching the, the main core of leadership. And if we can touch the main core, guess what? And they can spread the news very quickly, we're done. How do you how do you stay in communication and keep all those two hundred people on the same page? Well, we what we do is basically you know have these webinars. Where we set people down and we tell them what the focus is on, and we make them part of the deal. Mm -hmm. We make them part of the you know it's you not just my idea in. exactly. It's not Armand's idea what we're going to do. It's well, what do you think we should be doing? And we get everybody involved in this. It's almost like a boardroom, mm -hmm. and whatever everybody likes, everybody votes. Let's go. Let's do mm. definitely. Um, are events an important part of your culture? Definitely, events are, events, I think. You like know, what, what's, what's bigger, the big company convention, the local regional event, or the home event? I think the regional events are, I think, the most, the priority to get people to. I okay. think these are, um, the local cities, you know, they happen once a month or something? Well, or not, once every not three months? Every once a month or once every three months, but especially in the Latin community, they need to see the growth. Mm. And the more people you can fit in the room for a Super Saturday, for example. So social proof is important. Oh, definitely, definitely. If the more people see it, and if you can't fit people in the room, as a, if I'm gonna have, for instance, an event, and I know I'm gonna get a thousand people in, I'll get a room for 800. Mm -hmm. I want people waiting outside and not being able to come in. Mm -hmm. You know, if I know I can get, you know, uh, 2,000 people in the room, I'll, I'll definitely have, you know, a room for 1,500. Mm -hmm. Because I want people to be sitting outside saying, I couldn't fit. Mm -hmm. And to me, that news of that, you know, says, you know, my guy, we couldn't fit people in the room. They were standing, it was hot. I mean, it was, you know, the AC couldn't keep up with as many people that were here. Everybody was jumping up and down. Guess what? That's what it's about. It spreads the word. Oh, yeah.
It okay. spreads it very quickly. So you think that's that that's probably the biggest, and then and then after that, company convention. The convention, recognition is a very key point. You know, when people walking by with the rings or or their checks, or even though just their pins. You know, when when people are showing up and they just hit the first rank, guess what? That is the most motivating thing. Some of you know, people have to understand that most people. In my, in my philosophy, most people have never been recognized for anything. Yeah, that's true. And, and when they get just a minor thing, I mean, I, I, was, I was growing up, just for my example, you know, I was the big brother. Mm. I was the one babysitting my younger brother. I was dad, you know, and he was only two years younger than me. So everything he did was marvelous. Everything I did was wrong, right, at that point, you know. But, you know, I would have loved somebody to tell me, hey, great job, you know, what, you took care of him, good, good thank you, you made dinner, you know. Mm -hmm. I know she was, Tired. I know that she didn't mean not to do it, right. but a lot of people live through this. So even just getting a simple pin at the first rank, guess what? That's going to motivate your team faster than you can ever reach. Yeah. And guess what? If the more we do that to people and recognize their work, as a matter of fact, every time people walk in, I do recommend everybody in network marketing. If you're a leader, when you walk in a room, say good job. You know what? Thank you for what you're doing. I do right. appreciate what you're doing. And the more you tell that to people, they 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 feel like, oh my God, I'm. You noticed. Thank you. You know what? And they start working harder. One thing that kind of um, it's a hidden thing that the top earners always do. Yeah. Every time they come into contact with somebody, they find a way to compliment them. Definitely. Definitely. Their their top earners are complimenting machines. You have to be. They're like, oh wow, look at those shoes. Hey, look at that smile. Hey, this this guy's a star. Man, the energy is unbelievable. Whatever it happens to be, they. Well, the first thing that comes out of their mouth to prospects is a yeah, compliment. Definitely. The, and, and it's sincere. It's not just a, you know, a flattery thing. No, it has to be. It's because part it, of their nature is to, is to build people up. I think it is uh, a part of the culture we build, you mm. know, especially as leadership. And that's one of the reasons that I love your events. Mm. Um, because every time uh, I've watched it before, you know, uh, via online and then, you know, or video and then, and then being there live, is it's, it, you know, when you get to my level, you know, where I'm at in the company, on the top of the company, and I, I'm the, the first distributor, you know, and, and, you know, you have no one to really talk about different situations that you've gotten to, right? And, and it's beautiful to get friends that are in the same situation in different other companies where you can literally call up and ask and says, you know what, uh, you know, uh, uh, what happened when you reached this and this happened to you? Or what, this issue happened with your distributors? And what, what, you know, when you have that kind of base also, mm -hmm. That's phenomenal. That's why I really support what you're doing because I think a lot of people need to see that it's not about the companies. You know, this is an industry. Right. And the industry is about people. Yeah. And that's what we need to show. Recognition, support, complimenting, having each other's back, camaraderie. Definitely. The personal, how, how, how important is personal growth? Definitely. Inside of your culture, inside of your organization. It's important because see, personal growth is, first of all, I try to teach people at the very beginning as they're coming in, to really to get into a little small system, like like the five steps, for instance, just like like Something McDonald's basic. tried, yeah, like tries to show you how to make a cheeseburger, right? You put you put the bun, you put this, you put the it, done, wrap it up, let's go. Um, so they know what they're doing right away. Um, after that, you try to get them to learn a little bit better. Most of these people, especially in the Latin community or even here in the United States, a lot of people do have not had the schooling. Mm -hmm. Even it, just a regular schooling, uh, uh, you know, they have most of them have not even graduated high school, and and now you bring them in and you show them these steps. They're hungry to learn. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these guys, especially in Latin America, they didn't go to school because they weren't smart. They didn't go to school because they couldn't afford it. Well, they had to work or they had to do something else, but everybody was hungry to learn something. And if you can teach them the art of, of what is self-development, man, it, it's, it's just a change in the world for them. Yeah. And some people, I, and I believe this, on, People are in network marketing. If they're not here for the money, which is the minimal part, uh, uh, unbelievable, you know, most people are here for the self-development mm -hmm. because they, they know what they're going to learn. They're going to they feel good. It's almost like going to church every week, yeah. you know. And they, they sit there. They're growing. They're growing. They and clap. This is a, an environment. I've got lots of friends that they got involved in network marketing just to get around a positive group of people. Yeah, definitely. Just to change the people they're hanging out with instead of a negative environment, they're in a positive one, and everything yeah. else is is a bonus. You know, one of the times that I was. Um, I stepped away from network marketing for a, you know for a short period of time, and I didn't want to go back into network marketing. But what drew me back was being with the people, mm -hmm. stepping in. The and, you know, yeah, I, I just had to go back in front of the room. So I, I loved you know to, you know spending nights you know on Thursdays, Tuesdays, you know, 
some people don't understand this, but network marketing is not about the product. To me, the network marketing is not about the money to me. It's about the people. Mm -hmm. And when you're with people, then you see them change. You see them smile. You see them thinking. You, you know what? To me, that feels, and, and that, that's what it's about. It's about feeling. It's, you know, it's not even about the money no more. It's about how many people we can change. You know, if, um, if I had to pass away, you know, if, if for God forbid that, that I, something happened to me on the road, right? Um, I don't want my legacy to be how much money I made mm -hmm. in network marketing. Because I know, you know, if somebody says, hey, this guy made 10 million, 12 million, 13 million, 14 million a year, guess what? It's chump change compared to what Bill Gates is doing. Mm -hmm. You know, so you're, you're down there. But if we can show that your legacy is going to be how many people we can help and how many people we can change their lives. And I'm not talking about making them millionaires, it's just paying their bills, mm -hmm. making sure they can put food on the table for their kids, making sure they can do something more in their lives. We're done. I mean, I, I, that's what I want. And that's why I want to be recognized as, as the, the person who changed the most lives in this world. And that's where we're at. I mean, I'm, I, my, my wife laughs at me and says, you know what, you, you think you're Mother Teresa of, of no Mark? And I goes, no, but you know what, I have a calling for this. And I think that's, that's what we're at for. And that's what we're pushing for. So, I mean, that's one of the big reasons we're, we're going to bring a huge group now from this period on to the network marketing pro events. You know, and if, uh, and I'm going to think I, I'm going to fill the rooms. And, yeah. and, and the reason is, is that people have to see that part. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, in, uh, in regular network marketing, in the regular conventions, they, you, know, you get just the business, just the business, just the business, but nobody sees the industry. Mm -hmm. And when you see events like yours, one of the things that I love is that you see the industry, and guess what? We're all the same. Mm -hmm. No matter what company you're at, nobody's same hopes fighting. And dreams, exactly. Yeah. Same nobody's basic skills. Fighting in that room. Nobody's wearing their pins. Nobody. Everything. Everybody's hugging each other. They know each other from Facebook. You know what? It's like Facebook exploded in your in your in your uh, in, in live, right? And when you're sitting there and you're hugging, you're taking these uh, shots, and you know, and you're loving it. I, I have friends from all parts of the world in different companies. And when you can really do that without having the fear that, hey, you know what, if I take a picture with Eric Worre, am I gonna have my check cut? Right. You know what, that, that's not what it should be. It should be the industry right. and the industry as a whole. Right. That's it. Um, talk about, you talked a little bit about legacy. Talk about what, what makes you different. What makes you different? You know, you're, you're, you just as an individual, what makes you a better leader? What makes you uh, more successful? than somebody else who joined same time you did or around the same time you did and hasn't had the same kind of success. What do you do different? What makes you, what, what kind of separates you from the crowd? I think what separates me a lot from the crowd is that, like I said, I came in while I was 16. I think I was very young and I was very able to absorb a lot of the information very quickly. And like I told you before, I was put with the right people, you know, mm -hmm. and I was listening a lot to Jim Rohn and, you know, a lot to these great uh, mentors that are uh, all over the, you know, the internet now, you know, mm -hmm. and, and I, I remember just listening to some tapes and, and picking some information because I was never able to see them live at those points. But guess mm -hmm. what? It was like I was there every single time. And when you pick up these little, little tips and how to do the business, it makes you different than everybody else. Because now, unfortunately, with uh, I think network marketing, so all these people now have these systems. And I believe these just systems, and not to offend anybody, but I see a lot of these systems as they're like copycat systems. They just change the product, they change the name, they change, you know, the, you know, it, it was all the Amway system from many, many, many moons ago, and or the Herbalife system they were using, and, and all of a sudden, guess what? You know, uh, uh, it's not working for their company because it was not designed for their company. Mm -hmm. Not that it was the system is bad; it's not designed for their company. But when you bring in the passion. And you, you go down to phase one in, in network marketing, where you're out there every single day. And one of the things we do, and even my wife and I still do, we still prospect every single day. We still recruit every single day. It doesn't matter how much money we're making. It's about really showing people that if you're going to teach people to do a home meeting, you have to have a home meeting. Mm -hmm. If you're going to teach people to have a Thursday night meeting, you have to have a Thursday night meeting. If you're going to teach people to do something, you better make sure people are seeing you do it too. And if you can show them that, hey, I'm doing it, you should too. Mm -hmm. This is how we make the money. Guess what? People are duplicating you. Yep. Do this for me. Definitely. I'd like you to um, look into this camera and I'd like you to act as if you're, you're talking directly to one person. That person wants to have success. They want it so bad they can taste it. 
they don't quite know how to get there. They may be a little bit nervous or self-conscious, feel a little bit insecure about their skills or, or their abilities. Uh, what advice would you have for them to succeed in our profession? Well, this is one thing. Let's just talk about Joe. Let's just say it's Joe. Joe, I know you're having a lot of issues and a lot of problems, especially with network marketing. You're looking at it, you're not having any success. But first of all, you have to think and you have to look in the mirror and see where you really want to get to. I want to tell you one thing that if you look at yourself, what do you see? Do you see yourself as a million dollar earner? Do you see yourself as a thousand dollar earner? Where do you see yourself at? After you look at that and you look at yourself and you get to believe it, now repeat it. And when you repeat it and you multiply, you start repeating it all the time and all the time, I'm going to be this, I'm going to be this. And, I, and you get yourself to believe it because the mind does one thing, Joe. One of the things that it does is that, you know, it convinces you. That's why these, these uh, con artists out there, they believe so well in different things that they are, right? Uh, that that they, they, they can fool other people with. You have to fool yourself into the point that you are a professional because you become that professional. Now you become the professional so fast that you know you're going to start seeing, you're going to start shaking hands in that manner, and you're going to start building. Now one of the things I need you to do, Joe, is start going out there and looking for people. The key to this business is, is, is looking for people for your business. So I don't want you to go out there right away and look at your list. Leave your list a little on the side for it. I want you to go out there and look at and talk to people. Practice. Nobody here becomes a chef in the first day. You become, you try the time, first time you cook, it becomes uh, uh, a, this plate that you may not even eat yourself. And then from there, you start cooking a little bit better. Your recipe gets better. You start getting a lot better at what you do and everybody wants it. So we're going to start practicing what you're doing. You're going to start practicing uh, your art of becoming a person that attracts people. And the more we talk to people, the better it's going to get. Now, let me just tell you this. In network marketing, the more people you touch, the bigger you'll get. It doesn't matter if they tell you no or they tell you yes. The more people you get, the more people you touch, the more people you speak to, the ratio is that you're going to get at least 10% of those. If you're getting 10% of everybody you talk, how many people do you need to speak to every day to get the income that you want to reach? The more and more people that you touch, the better you will get. Look, this is one thing that I did. When I was starting this company, my goal was 100 products a day. I would not go home without moving 100 products a day. And I would go door to door, I would go to flea markets, I would go anywhere I needed to go where there was a lot of people, and I would move 100 products a day. If not, I would not go home. That was the deal. And we started doing that so well that we start our growing our income very fast. We start growing our distributor base very quickly. We start growing our people very quickly. And the more you do that, the better you'll get. Now do me one more favor. Sure. And for the English speaking people listening, you're going to have to uh, forgive us for a moment. Do that same thing, but in Spanish. Definitely. Para todos que están allá afuera, Amigos míos, aquí estamos para ayudarlos a crecer. Una de las cosas que quiero que cada uno de ustedes entiendan que si ustedes quieren crecer en network marketing, tienen que ir a prospectar, salir afuera a buscar gente. Cada vez que ustedes salen a buscar gente, amigos míos, no importa si les dicen no o sí en este en transcurso cuando están buscando, la mayoría de gente tienes que pensarlo así, el 10% se va a quedar te va a comprar producto, va a estar dentro de tu red. Si cada uno de ustedes, amigos míos, siguen buscando gente, buscando gente, buscando gente, buscando gente, cada vez, ¿sabes qué? Más vas a crecer. Al principio, cuando yo comencé esta empresa donde estoy yo, nosotros vivíamos 100 productos al día entre mi esposa y yo. Si no, nos regresamos a casa. 100 productos al día, 100 productos al día, 100 productos al día. Ese es el método donde agarramos una base de clientes, una base de distribuidores, una base de muchas cosas. Y una de las cosas, amigos míos, que quiero que ustedes no reconozcan, es que lo más que con la gente que tú abres, lo más que vas a crecer. Entonces, depende en ti cuánto quieres crecer tú. ¿Estás listo para hacer algo grande? Prospecta, prospecta, prospecta. ¿Te gusta la idea? You said that faster. Uh, I'm, I'm very good at Spanish now. <laughs> Ladies and you know gentlemen, what? 
Thank you, Armand. No, thank you for the invitation. I appreciate it very much, and I hope you got value from this. Ladies and gentlemen, um, if, you, if you did get value, pass this forward to somebody that you think would benefit from listening to it. Uh, share it with a friend, like, comment, push it around the world. Together we're doing important work. Ladies and gentlemen, our wish for all of you is that you do decide to become a network marketing professional, that you decide to go pro, because it is a stone cold fact that we do have a better way. Now let's go tell the world. Everyone have an amazing day, and we'll see you next time. Take care, bye-bye.